Alan sorabi rana ba to pung tela nya ba nyo leng tu ji ai nyo leng tu ji sorabi rana ba to pung tela nya to kame nakam ngam na da pang lang le ai nyo dia mara nyo pung o leng tu ji kan sorpo son ji kan gira ba sebe kon ji o pung tela nya sorpo son na mura mari o pung tela e to ka e to kame nakam ngam na nya dene to ka tu ji na ka tu ji ngam ngam na da adar kardo na san <hesitation> Dombada ponca itu, asoro ponco dari Sailen Awaro, anjing jinlem Baralenji, Baralenji ki dari Dombada aile, tu sering ada kardun nilai utai nai. If I am a person who is on uh, social security, I am entitled to a ration card, and I am, you know, I may migrate, I may do whatever. My biometric, because biometrics change, my biometrics top spot. In the Supreme Court, the UIDAI chief comes to the Supreme Court to tell the judges that oh, that's not a problem, because what we'll be doing is that you know we when we realize that it's not working, they just have to send us a message, and we will send them an OTP, and then that OTP will be sufficient. So if your biometric doesn't work, your mobile phone number will authenticate that you are the person. Most people, in you know, many people when they enrolled gave. When they were forced to give a number, gave a number which was whoever was around. Because not everyone has a phone to their name. Many people, because they do this prepaid and it doesn't work, the numbers have stopped working. Many people aren't able to afford keeping a phone alive all the time. So what are they going to be doing? Which means your biometric goes and you don't have the wherewithal to be able to maintain a phone continuously and in whatever function over a period of time. Then they say, okay, so the only option that's been given for people without a phone is that you go and put your biometric and your biometric doesn't work. My question is, why is it that this is a problem that's known? Why has it not been addressed? Janna Seba Kendra Gamla Nama Sarkara Nabai Amte Gamtavu Bara Nam Dung Lai Te Anang Aninji Inlen Ebar Rajirin Aninji Osubi Dalena Te Bartalenji Kia dar kar de to bot pori chaya de to em te bol da ko yande na ninji e bar raja de na ninji bar talenji. So we are trying to understand how uh, technology uh, failure which leads to exclusion and how that exclusion affects different sections differently. So they might be older beneficiaries, they might be single card ration holders, uh, people who are uh, disabled. I, I even visually challenge people. They can even be people who have faced, been ill for some time or have had a brief uh, illness because either due to aging or illness or variety of reasons, your fingerprints change and hence the pr fingerprint against which the machine checks your identity has not changed and but yours has changed and so it does not match and so these are typically the people who whom whose fingerprints might not be machine readable ek bang bilkul lunja then taraf pet par golawa tak jab ka khine sai jaya mung tak jana kharcha bhi nahi tak kharcha sarkar de li hospital kharcha sarkar de li prana jana kharcha ko de mai kaam to garib aadmi Privacy is virtually uh, a manifestation of liberty in today's technological age. So if to preserve liberty, you have to preserve privacy. And that's something which applies across the board, whether you're from a marginalized section or whether you're from uh, a more affluent section. And uh, I also did a, a field trip where I could see as to how uh, there was an adverse impact with something like uh, Aadhaar was having because of the insistence on Aadhaar before you were released, say, your rations. And so you actually meet people in villages in India who, because of their old age or because of their disability, uh, cannot really go across to the dispensation store and uh, give their biometrics for identification. 
and the result is that uh, over a period of time they become dependent on their neighbors and family members and so that's a great uh, diminution of um, your independence and your dignity and I think uh, that comes across because you know there are people with all sorts of disabilities across the world and not everyone can go and make a biometric identification so I think what really affected us uh, or affected me when I saw that was uh, that there was that there was no option that unless you uh, went and had your biometrics uh, verified you weren't released your rations which was very very um, you know dehumanizing at a certain level the Aadhaar architecture is based on fingerprints right and I think as it's well documented, fingerprints change over age. Fingerprints are uh, not the same particularly when you do hard physical work. So the fact is if you uh, link everything to your ability to get a probabilistic check like fingerprints passed, if your fingerprints don't match, then you're sort of excluded and everybody automatically assumes because of uh, this uh, ideology that we have the technology is the answer to everything. So if you have failed the test, means it's not you, right? So that that has, that has led to starvation deaths in in uh, in, uh, in 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 Jharkhand, I believe, and in in uh, parts of Odisha too, from what I understand, Andhra Pradesh. Mm. When the government collects some data about you and everybody collects some data, your bank knows something about you, your hospital knows something about you, the tax man knows something about you, the police may know something about you. All of these are discrete packets of information. When all of them get combined, then you have a dossier of personal information which is, the, which is perhaps what Stalin had or what Hitler had. Uh, the fact is that we are... Uh, uh, as, as a democracy, we shouldn't have these fears is a fact, you know, that it's become the tautology. Because we are a democracy, we shouldn't have these fears. But the truth is that with all of this information, will we remain a democracy? Or will finally the people who rule, uh, who rule in our name, will they rule us instead of us being their masters?